everyone, welcome to this very special edition of The Coin Couch. I'm lucky enough to be here with the Managing Director of the World Money Fair. This is Gitta Kunka. Thank you very much for speaking with me today. You're most welcome, Andrea. Thank you. Now, how are you feeling about the fair? Well, uh, as many of you know, it's my first fair, so obviously I'm a little bit nervous, uh, but also very excited about it. Yes. Well, I was just saying before, you don't look nervous. You look really in charge, capable, and definitely excited about, well, the next few days ahead. We have a young collector here with us, folks, collecting oh, some snacks. Now, I want to ask you about your background a little bit before we go into the fair. Obviously, the name Kunka holds a lot of weight <laughs> yeah. around here. This is a very sort of famous family and then famous auction house. Where do you fit into the sort of family, family structure roots, there? Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, um, as you may know, my father, Fritz Rudolf Kunka, founded the company. Mm -hmm. And then obviously, I'm Ulrich's uh, sister. Right. The older sister. I've got two brothers. So my older brother, Ulf, is also in the coin business. So it's oh my kind of in our DNA yes. if you want to. Yes, exactly. Well, as you know, you've met my son, Jack. So coins, you know, once you start off with families, that's it, it just keeps going through. Now, did you ever think about working for Kunke per se? Were you ever encouraged like Ulrich to sort of follow after the, your father's footsteps and work with Kunka or you wanted to do your own thing? Yeah, I think I pretty much wanted to do my own thing and I, I, the way I look at it, I still do because I'm working on the coin fair that's not really being in the coin business directly yes, as yeah. a dealer. Uh, but of course, I mean, if you look at a successful company, you ask yourself, well, should I do it or should I not? But I'm mm. very, very uh, happy with the way that I chose my career. So I started off in consulting and big banks, large corporations, and I think I can benefit from that now. So what things do you think you've, you've taken from those positions that you can bring to the position of managing director? What's your yeah. selling points, if you like? So what... what <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a job interview. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so I think what the shareholders were looking for was um, transformation. So and all I did in my career was really business development and transforming business. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's a capability you have. So it's um, building strategies, analyzing the businesses, come up with ideas, how to how to grow and make a good business even stronger. Because at the peak of yeah, your success, you should think about, well, what is the next step? Mm. And I think that's what I learned in my career as a consultant and also from the big banks. But also it was international management and most importantly, shareholder, Shareholder and stakeholder management. So I've got six, and that is a challenge in itself, of course, in yes. a positive way. What do you think of the industry at the moment? Because I know that at the Mint Directors Conference, one of the big themes was a cashless society and how we're we moving from coin collecting and how we're going to inspire new collectors or keep this industry alive. So, how do you feel about that? I think, I think the future of coin collecting. Yeah, I think there's a great potential for the industry, um, really in a very, very positive way. I mean, we have a very strong collector base, specifically in Germany. Germany is one of the largest collector markets in the world. Uh, but if you look at the people, and probably you will see that at the Kunko auction, so it may have changed slightly over the last five to ten years, but mm -hmm. we're, I mean, the collectors are usually very old. You rarely see females. Mature, mature collectors. Okay, yes, sorry, sorry, yes, that's my, <laughs> that's my German-English translation, yes, of course, mature, um, rarely see females, and I think younger collectors, like younger generations would be interested, but probably they don't know much about it, so when I talk to my friends and say, well, I'm in the coin business now, they look at me as if I'm a weirdo now, right, what, what yeah. does that mean, why would anybody... Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't understand. What do you mean coins? Yeah. yeah. What exactly do you do? And you yeah. really have to work hard to explain. Whereas if someone would just say, I'm in IT, the yeah. question's answered. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So I, I think that's, as you say, one of the things is um, younger collectors just not having the opportunity to be exposed yeah. to this kind of hobby. And I think um, that's one of the things we need to look into. Exactly. So Yes, you're exposed. One aspect that I also think we are um, underestimating, specifically with women, 
I think uh, minting coins is about art. Yes, yes. Yet nobody talks about it. No. So I, I think we should we should really talk about the the artists behind the coin and, and promote that a little bit mm. more. So it's really a combination of global networking, social or uh, uh, environmental aspects, um, as well as yeah promoting the art uh, behind it. But also marketing is um, mm. very different to other industries, right? I, I always, I mean, I worked for L'Oreal 20 years ago, right? And, and everybody tells you why you should buy a product and how great you would feel buying the product. Yes. And it gives you access to interest groups. Whatever it is, there's so much emotional selling involved um, in, you know, in actually marketing other products and we don't seem to be doing that. Which is strange because when you get into coin collecting itself, it is such a passionate thing. It, people feel so strongly about what they're collecting, whether it's the stories, the designs, the, the precious metal itself. It's, it's exactly. one of those things that has the ability to sort of draw that out of someone. Exactly. World Money Fair, if you look at it, we have access to the entire value chain yeah. of the coin industry, starting from production to secondary market, the dealers. So I thought we are in the unique position to actually promote the industry from a neutral position. So, and that's probably uh, part of the strategy and we may talk about that later, but I thought I could help them uh, find new ways to marketing approaches, um, yeah, explain it from, from my experience on other industries how they actually could improve that mm -hmm. holistically as an industry. Because if you help the industry, you help, you help everybody in the industry. Of course. It all trickles down exactly. sort of to the last person, to the end buyer. And I think that's... I don't, I don't think anyone could come into that from sort of a, a marketing or consulting background. I think it is definitely a plus that you have the conquer name behind you and you know what this is all about. You've seen people sort of collecting coins and you understand the value within that. So you've got that background as well, would you say? That's yeah, that another was, asset. Um, I never looked at it um, from that perspective, but I think you're tr you're right because um, even though I was never involved, I saw I thought uh, I saw the passion. Mm. We were talking about that earlier. I saw the passion of the people collecting coins, and when I thought about it, I I thought, well, do I like coins? What yeah, what's my position? So I think I'm more the investor type of person. Yes, and even if you are an investor. That's also very emotional. It's at the core. I mean, it's 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 yeah, your savings for the future, right? Of it's course, important topics. So yes. uh, regardless of how you look at it, it, it is an emotional topic. Yes. So that's why we decided. No, thank you. That's right. Oh, no, okay. I'll take it. Thank you very much. Okay. Caring <laughs> is caring. Thank you. Half time break. <laughs> okay. Yes, so I think there are various programs we as an industry could start. And again, so when I think about it, everybody asks me, so yeah, but why are you suggesting that at World Money Fair? You're organizing a fair and that's five days a year. So that's different what I'm suggesting, right? We, we'd like to keep having the fair. <laughs> exactly, exactly, in the next couple because, of years. Yeah, and that is going to be a core focus, of course. So the yes. fair is going to stay. We, we like it as it is. We may change it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But when I think about what my vision is, it's 365 uh, days a year of fair. And what I mean by that is really the industry coming together and exchanging ideas, uh, working together on programs, and that's what mm -hmm. we like to promote going forward. Yes. Um, we have a couple of initiatives launched already for this year. So you may have seen that we have a children workshop. Yeah. I have seen that and unfortunately Jack's a little bit too young. Yes, he's too young. Yeah, but we yeah. might pop in and ha have a look at that because I think it's really interesting. And I, I was just so happy when I saw that, that uh, one of the mints, especially the guest of honor this year, so yes. there's going to be so much attention on uh, the Munsa Osterreich that it, it's so good that they've still taken the time to yeah. say, hold on, what can we actually do yeah. to try and inspire some young collectors? So. I am going to try and pop by with Jack just to have a little look at that. But yeah, I think you should, should that's one thing, that. you know. Yeah. It's about educating society in a in a fun way, mm. and uh, I think that's important. Um, so, and the other things, um, we also would like to ed educate our collectors and the dealers. So, 
we have for the first time we have podium discussions so one is around the cultural asset protection law in germany and what that means for the national dealers and the international dealers and then the other the other workshop um, is around grading uh, you probably know it's very popular yes it came, it came from the us so it's becoming more and more important uh, in asia and then the question is um, how do we deal with it in europe uh, there's a very controversial discussion ongoing in the market and that's where we said well we will have a podium discussion uh, with representatives that's going to be interesting it is going to be very interesting it, uh, it starts with the pros and cons that we collected in advance and then we can discuss it and i expect a little bit of heated discussion as well yes so definitely a debate so we are coming from a fair that's happening five days a year right we put a lot of effort into it but the idea to become uh, a, a continuous exchange forum, uh, an interest group platform, so that is really new. Uh, and I think I'd, I'd and like that keeps it going 365 days a year. People exactly. talking and exchanging ideas and sharing knowledge, basically. Exactly. Of course, we need, we need to build it. I need the help from the industry and they need to see the benefit. And I hope they start realizing that we are really transforming into something different. And we are really interested in promoting the industry. Mm, great um, talking with you today. Thank you so much for your patience. <laughs> Thank you, everyone who hung out with us there. <laughs> well, here we are. It's good to be talking about young collectors when there is a young collector in the room. Where there's the, the different challenges that are arise <laughs> with that. Um, seriously, though, best of luck for the rest of the show. I Thank hope you. I do get to attend some of these talks because I think they're going to be so interesting mm -hmm. but I'm sure we'll, we will be seeing you at the ribbon cutting yes, at the yeah. guest of honor functions around the uh, fair and thanks again that thank was you great very much, Andrea. thank you <laughs>